Okay, so the topic I'm going to be talking about today is TTA surgery in dogs. And the reason why I chose that topic is because working at vet clinics, um, one of the doctors there particu particularly did this surgery quite often um, on his surgery days. So what is a TTA? It is a tibial tuberosity advancement. Tibial meaning um, the tibia bone. And then tuberosity is relating to the front edge of the tibia, uh, specifically where the attachment of the ligament is gonna be occurring. And then advancement means to bring forward. So it's gonna be bringing um, the front part of the tibia bone forward. It is a surgical treatment for cranial cruciate ligament injuries, also known as CCL. Um, a CCL is equivalent to an ACL injury in humans, so sometimes you'll hear veterinarians um, talk to their patients and owners about an ACL injury, but is referring to a CCL in dogs. And it is going to include plates, spacers, and screws. And then before you go on, remember I'm, I'm your partner, so when I see something I can tell you more about. Usually with animals that are on their four legs, you never use anterior and posterior. It's better to do primates anterior, like in the human, you're saying, and you did a great explanation. You'd have an ACL in a human, but the exact same thing in a dog is a CCL. Because in dogs, you use cranial caudal rather than anterior and posterior. So in really, in four-legged animals, which are most of our companion animals and pets are, you don't use anterior. But obviously, there's some exceptions, because if you talk about the brain, in the dog, you can say anterior pituitary gland, see? So there's some exceptions, but for general gross anatomy, you usually never say anterior or posterior, cranial versus caudal, great. So a little bit of anatomy of the knee itself. So the knee joint is gonna include the end of the femur, which is gonna be this part here, and then the tibia, this part, and then the patella, which is also known as the kneecap. So this Part here is the front of the knee and then there's also going to be cartilage and other joint fluid to help the knee move smoothly. I want to point out the cranial cruciate ligament which is what I was just explaining as the CCL and that is the red one noted here so it's connecting the back of the femur to the front of the tibia and then there's also the caudal cruciate ligament which is connecting the front of the femur to the back of the tibia in cruciate, it means crossing, so you can see that these ligaments here are crossing each other. And then I also wanted to point out the patellar ligament, and that is um, going to be right here, and that is connecting the femur to the tibia, and also on um, the femur part of this, the, patella, the patellar ligament is going to be connected to the quadricep, which will be important later for the surgery. And like Dr. Ulrich was um, explaining, so cranial, meaning um, towards the head of the body or in front of, that's how you can note this one here. It's gonna be in front of the caudal cruciate ligament, whereas caudal meaning behind. So a CCL rupture, that's gonna be when that red, um, as denoted here, the red part here, that's when that breaks or oops, sorry that's when that breaks or tears so when that happens the femur is going to want to move backwards and the tibia is going to want to move forward and that's because there that ligament there isn't holding the femur forward and the tibia back so they're going to want to separate themselves and when they do that that can also be known as a cranial tibial subluxation or a partial partial dislocation and this could lead to arthritis or bone spurs. And bone spurs are tiny growths that develop on an edge of a bone. And both of those can be extremely painful. So some signs that you can look out for. Um, if your dog is lame in the back leg or not using it a lot to walk, um, holding it up, the knee itself can become swollen. And then this picture here is depicting a veterinarian doing the drawer sign. So what it, the um, veterinarian is holding the femur here with one hand and is gonna be moving the tibia with the other hand. And if the tibia is moving forward and backward like a drawer would, then you know that the CCL has been ruptured. Um, you can also look at radiographs um, and that would show any arthritis or bone spurs that have occurred because of the CCL injury. 
So how can a dog get a CCL injury? It can happen um, in very healthy dogs, kind of like with athletes and humans. Um, it can be just a wrong step. Same thing with dogs. A dog running after a ball could take a wrong turn or step in a hole and that could injure the CCL. It is common in large breeds, including St. Bernard's, Golden Retrievers, Labrador Retrievers, and German Shepherds. Also, it can occur in small dogs. Any dog that's going to be overweight, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the knee um, to withhold more weight than it needs to. So the surgery itself, during the surgery, the CCL is going to be removed and any bone spurs that were noticed in a previous um, x-ray. So a tibia osteotomy will occur, and that is the cutting of the tibia bone. So you can see in this dotted line here, this is where the tibia is going to be cut. And by doing that, the patellar ligament is going to be moved forward. So a spacer and a plate is going to be placed here. So once the cut is made, this is going to want to move forward and therefore moving this patellar ligament forward. In this x-ray here, this is a post-surgery x-ray. So these little lines here are going to be the staples to hold everything together after surgery. But this here is going to be the spacer and then the plate, and you can notice screws are in here to help keep all of that in place. So this is the tibia bone here, and this part as well, this is the front of the tibia bone, also known as the tibial tuberosity that I was saying earlier. And you can notice this kind of whitish part here, that's where the gap is. That's where the gap is, and the spacer is going to help hold that in place, as well as this um, plate here. So. The goal of this um, surgery is to have a 90 degree angle between the tibial plateau, so you can, that's what this line is here, as well um, is a 90 degree with the patellar ligament. So you can kind of see this white faint line here. Um, this is gonna be the patellar ligament. So right here, it's making that 90 degree angle. And by, that, and by making that 90 degree, it's gonna help stabilize the knee and it's gonna re relieve the load that's going to be put on the caudal cruciate ligament, this one here. So since we took the CCL out, there would be a lot of pressure put on the um, caudal cruciate ligament. So by doing that 90 degree angle, it helps relieve some of that pressure. And it's also going to put some of that onto the quadricep here. So like I said, the, um, the patella ligament is going to be connected to the quadricep up here. So that's going to be a key player in helping st stabilize the knee. So the patellar and the quadricep is kind of going to be the CCL that has been removed. So why should we perform a TTA? There are other surgeries that can be done um, to help with a CCL injury, but TTAs have been found to be easier to perform and they have been shown to have great recovery. They seem to start using the leg more quickly than other surgeries. It's less invasive and less soft tissue dissection and the swelling and pain post-operation seems to be decreased as well. So during the recovery process, usually pain and antibiotic medications will be given. Um, it is very important to keep the dog calm, no running or jumping. So keeping the dog on a short leash while going outside um, is crucial. Maybe putting the dog in a room for a while just so it doesn't have access to be running around the entire house. This picture here is depicting laser therapy. So you can see a little red light being emitted here. That's going to produce a little bit of heat. It's not going to be hot. If it's too hot, then that's going to cause an issue. It can burn the skin. Um, but with the settings based on their, the color of their um, hair and skin and how thick their hair is on the area and what, it, what we're actually treating will help depend on what kind of light source will be admitted and how warm it should be. So that um, there is going to be helping to reduce the swelling and pain, and it will increase the healing. So you'll kind of rub this bulb here around on the incision site and then around the knee as well to help increase healing. The staple should be out in about 10 to 14 days, and around that time you should notice some toe touching. And that is when the dog starts to put their toe down to show that they're actually trying to use that leg. In about two months, um, you could do a, get a radiograph done, and that would to be to make sure that the bone is growing properly, and you can start bringing back some normal activity. Still on the short leash, but you could start to do some um, kind of branch out after that those two months. 
at about three months, it should be completely healed. Um, it will still be sore and you want to work towards building back any muscle that has been lost during the time. And then these are my sources. Questions, comments, I'll let you point. Yeah. So when you do the laser therapy, how often do you have to do that? So I'm going to repeat the question so everybody can hear. How often do you do the laser therapy? That was the question. So I know not every vet does this, but at our vet specifically, um, I know after surgery they would come in maybe twice a week and then kind of decrease to once a week after that. So about once a week, and the treatments themselves are only a couple minutes long. They're about three to six minutes. Um, and usually, the, I mean, the dog usually doesn't feel anything. We'll just sit there. It might take two people if the dog's wiggly, but they'll just sit there, and you go ahead and do the treatment. And like I said, it, the skin itself will feel warm, but if it ever feels too hot, then you need to change the settings. Okay. Yeah. Um, for a dog that's athletic, uh, if they have this injury, if they go through like the rehabilitation, will they ever be able to like, continue with their like, so you're asking after the injury? If it's an athletic dog, will it get back to 100% basically what you're asking? Um, It'll take some time to get back. Like I said, it takes a couple months to be completely healed, but you're still going to have to build back that muscle and kind of reteach that knee. Um, I know it is very common for dogs to kind of still be easy on that leg that they had surgery on and put a lot of pressure on their other leg, so then their other knee will have to get the surgery as well. So that can be an issue, so you want to make sure that they're using that leg and doing exercise to build up to what they were at. I've heard that it's, you're more likely to lose the other leg too. Is that true? <laughs> to injure the other yeah. leg? Yeah, yeah and yeah, that's so what yeah, I was I'll trying to repeat the yeah. question. So, like, if you have this surgery on one side and you have that injury, is it more likely that the other one will pop too yeah. then sometime? Yeah, so because they're going to be limited on that leg and they might not be using it for a couple months and then they try to jump back into things that other legs and have a lot more pressure on it and be used a lot more than their hurt leg even if they may be healed they stay they still may be trying to baby that leg so the other leg is going to be likely to get it as well yeah as far as i know and you may know better than me but there's no like preemptive surgery you can do kind of like to prevent the other one from tearing correct okay so here's the question the question is there any is there any surgery that you could do that can prevent this? You know, there are some surgeries, other cases like canine bloat comes to mind, where if you have a Great Dane, you do something called a prophylactic uh, gastropexy. So you're gonna prevent the bloat. Is there anything that people do other, I mean, surgical is really what you're doing. You can do the take it easy part and be gentle, but is there anything surgical that you can do? I don't think there's anything surgical that you can do and like Dr. Allard said, you can have a dog that's really calm and, main, and be healthy weight and never have um, this injury. But like I said, a healthy dog could be running around and just twist its knee the wrong way and now it has this, needs to get this surgery. Kind of luck of the draw. Was it your lucky day or not? Yeah. Do you know how much a procedure like this would cost? Okay, that's a great question. Can you give us an average cost uh, that, you know, or take a wild guess or a pretty good guess, or that's, here's where the audience might help us too. Yeah, I personally never had a dog have this surgery, so I don't know if anybody else has. You have? Okay. What I was think that? I worked it over somewhere it was about $1,300, $1,400. Yeah, I was going to say probably over $1,000 for sure, and that includes this whole surgery itself and then post-operation care and medications, and if you're doing the laser treatment, that costs money as well and bringing your dog in. So. Did you say $1,300? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, we, so, did. we did the Pansama, which is using... Uh, adipose tissue to go through instead of putting like metal or screws in okay. to tie back. Looks out of this. Okay, yeah. So obviously there's more than one technique, Correct. right? So the metals and screw might cost more so that right. Right. Cost. right. And the thing is, find a veterinarian that's done these things many times. Never let somebody do this kind of surgery and it's their first time. Right? Correct. Don't let anybody practice on your dog. Because I've heard horror stories, you know, like, well, I'll try it, or I think I can do it. No, I'm leave. Right? Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to know how many, this one vet <coughs> says most of the time, was it a certain day or all the time that he's there doing that? 
he would have surgeries twice a day, and about each day he was doing at least two of them. Yeah, and that's a good sign. I mean, because mm -hmm. it gets routine, and the more things you see, because anatomy does vary by the size of the dog, the breed of the dog. So if you're aware of these little things before you go in there, so much better. Questions, comments, others? Yeah. So I currently have a dog that I think like uh, I can't remember if he just got the surgery or if he's going to school, but he started having injuries on his other leg. So what they did is they started getting him pain meds so that he wouldn't feel the pain in the leg that he had surgery on to prevent his injury from happening again. Okay, so, so like if they're trying to like not use that one leg, the pain medicine would allow him to use that leg even if it was more painful. Excellent. Wonderful. So we had two.